Hi Vanguards. Today we're going to start looking at uh, stoichiometry, which is really the big finish to the year. So uh, as we start going through this, could you make sure that you have your calculator and your periodic table with the um, solubility rules on the back of it. Get those things ready, uh, get a nice cup of coffee, and away we go. All right, so so far you guys are good with the names and formulas of ionic and molecular compounds. CuNO32, of course, is copper 2 nitrate because copper has a plus 2 charge. Dicarbon tetrahydrogen monoxide, that indicates it's a molecular compound. We use monoditri-tetras. You are good at knowing the number of atoms, number of monoatomic, mo number of polyatomic ions per compound. For example, MgNO32. A couple questions. How many nitrates are there? Well, there's two nitrates. How many oxygens are there? Well, there's two sets of three, which is six oxygens. Those kind of questions. You'll need to know that. Uh, states of matter, solids, liquids, gases, aqueous, what do they mean? How can you tell what they are? Writing skeleton reactions, the basic reactions, unbalanced ones, and then balancing them because, of course, matter cannot be created or destroyed. We're also going to use those numbers in the front, the coefficients, to tell us the molar ratios. And then you also need to know the type of reaction. So when you start looking at a reaction and trying to figure out, well, how much stuff is going to be involved in this reaction? We're going to start stoichiometry using molar ratios, and we'll calculate using moles equals grams divided by molar mass. Let's go ahead and do this. If you have a chemical reaction like this one, you can see 2H2 gas plus 1 oxygen molecule, which is also a gas, will react to make 2 molecules of water. And if it's hot enough, that'll also be a gas. That could be a liquid, too, depending on the temperature. Okay, so we have a, several ways to look at this. We could talk about the particles. Two molecules of hydrogen plus one molecule of oxygen will make two molecules of water. We could talk about number of particles. 12.04 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of this plus 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of this will make 12 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of this. We could talk about moles, two moles, one mole, two moles. We could also talk about mass. Four grams of hydrogen gas will react perfectly with 32 grams of oxygen to make 36 grams of water. Because these are all gases, we could also talk about the liters of the gases. It turns out that we'd have, uh, we could have 44.8 liters will react perfectly with 22.4 liters of this to make 44.8 liters of this. Now that's interesting too because you'd expect, well, 44.8 liters plus 22.4 liters, isn't that 66 or something, 67? Well, it ends up being 44, and that's because if you remember the mole box, the mole box tells us that so two moles takes up 44.8 liters. Two moles over here on the right, that also takes up 44.8 liters of space. Here's an introductory problem. All right, so I'm going to show you a way to do these that a teacher taught me a long, long time ago. And this method is really, really slick. So we have this, this reaction, hydrogen plus oxygen making water. And you remember that when we balance this to 2 to 1 to 2 mole to mole to mole ratio. All right, in this problem, we start with 200 grams of hydrogen gas. So where would I put that? Moles is in this row. Molar mass is here. Gram, grams is here. So 200 grams of hydrogen. There it is. Two, zero, zero. Um, let's go with three sig figs. 200 grams. Let's figure out how much oxygen you have to go and get to make this reaction proceed perfectly. As you're running this problem, keep your eyes on the prize. This is what we want to get right here. How many grams of oxygen? So to get that, we can use this equation down in the bottom right-hand corner. And this circle is a really cool calculator. If you want to calculate something like grams, you, you take your hand and you cover up grams, cover it up, and uh, you're left with an equation. And it's moles times molar mass down here. If you wanted to calculate moles sometime or other, you would go down to this equation and you'd cover up moles with your hand. And you're left with the equation grams divided by, here's the divided sign, divided by the molar mass, the grams per mole. And that'll give you the number of moles. We know we have a 2 to 1 to 2 mole to mole, to mole ratio. So I want to calculate how many moles of hydrogen there will be. So to do that, I'm going to use this equation this calculator down here, so moles equals grams divided by molar mass. So I have grams, 200, I need molar mass. I look at the periodic table and I say, well, hydrogen weighs, has a molar mass of, or an atomic mass of one, but because it's a molecule, it's got a molar mass of two grams per mole. So now we will do a little calculation here. Moles equals grams divided by molar mass. I will take my calculator 
and take uh, 200, 200 grams divided by molar mass, which is 2, and that is gives us 100, of course, 100 moles here. So now we have a 2 to 1 ratio. 2 is to 1. This is half as much as 100 is to how much? 50. 50 moles. And by the way, we can figure this. So we have a 2 to 1 to 2 mole to mole to mole ratio. So 2 moles to 1 mole is the same as 100 is to 50. And what number would go here? I bet you know it's 100. So we'll have 100 moles of water that's made. So now we want to figure out how many grams of oxygen. Well, let's look at this calculator. To calculate grams, we need moles times molar mass. So we need to calculate the molar mass of oxygen. The periodic table says oxygen weighs 16. There's two of them, so that's 32. 32 grams per mole. That's the unit over here. And so now we have to calculate how many grams. The calculation is moles times, top, bottom right corner, moles times molar mass. So 50 times 32. 50 times 32 equals 1,600 of oxygen to react with 200 grams of hydrogen. The other answer that we want to get is this one here. How many grams of water will we make? Well, because matter is neither created nor destroyed, there's a shortcut right now. And that is 200 plus 1,600. I think the answer is going to be 1,800. I'll, I'll write it here. I'll write it small. 18. I think it's going to be 1,800. Let's calculate it, though. To get grams, using this equation in the bottom right corner, grams equals moles times molar mass. We need the molar mass of water. So hydrogen's 1, oxygen's 16. Together, that's 1 plus 1 plus 16 is 18. And now we want to calculate the grams, and that's moles times molar mass. 100 times 18, well... I don't even need a calculator for that. I'm so smart. 1,800. Bingo. Done. That's stoichiometry. Let's do another problem. Here we have a combustion reaction, right? So we've got our fuel source up here. It's a carbon thing. We've got oxygen. We make CO2. We make H2O. We need to balance it. So what is my mole to mole to mole to mole ratio? It's 1 to 2. Boy, this is hard to write with. Whoa. 1 to 2 to 1 to 2, mole to mole to mole to mole. It's not anything else. It's not gram to gram to gram to gram. It's not molar mass to molar mass to molar. It's nothing else. It's moles to moles to moles to moles ratio. Let's see what the question says. You have 15 grams of CH4. What do I know? 15 grams of CH4. I'm going to find where to write 15. 15 grams of C. There it is. There it is. 15 grams. Now, the question might ask me to fill in every last blank in this whole equation, but I might not need to do all that work. The question only says how many grams of CO2 will be formed. So right here, that's what I want for my final answer. Well, I can't just say it's a one-to-one -one ratio because that's only moles to moles. So I've got to go from here, use my molar mass, and get my moles. And then when I get the moles, I'm going to go jump over here to CO2. I'll have the moles. Use my molar mass, calculate this, all right? So I'm going to need that equation again. Grams I got, molar mass is 12, plus 1, plus 1, plus 1, plus 1 is 16. And now I have to ca calculate the moles. Moles equals grams divided by molar mass. 15 over 16, that's just a little bit uh, less than 1. Actually, we're using two sig figs, so I'm going to go with 0.94. Sorry, I can't write more clearly. All right, so it's a 1 to 1. 1 to 1 mole to mole ratio. Let's see. 1 is to 1. Now you can write it like this if you want to. 1 is to 1 as 0.94 is to x. But this is, it's a 1 to 1 ratio, so we can just use common sense to say 0.94. All right? So now the molar mass of CO2, it's 44. I think it's 16 plus 16 plus 12. I'm pretty sure that's 44. 44 grams per mole. Look it up on your periodic table. Now, let's calculate the grams. Grams, look down here. What's the formula? Grams equals moles times molar mass. 0.94 times 44. 41.25. I'm using two sig figs, so 41. So I'll be making 41 grams of CO2. And there's no other questions that's asked here. I could calculate how many grams of oxygen I need or how many grams of water I'll make, but... The question only says, dude, how many grams of CO2 are you going to make? All right? Remember I said that there's two different ways to do this. 
So most of the time in chemistry, people use the factor label method for stoichiometry, which is great. It's nice and organized, but it's not as visual. So I like my method for simple problems. But if you look down here, this is what a factor label method problem is going to look like. So in this case, let's just go through the lo logic of this. 15 grams of CH4. 15 grams of CH4. How much water would be made? All right. How many grams? Well, well let's think this through. We would say, hmm, I have to get this balanced. It's a 1 to 2 to 1 to 2 multi 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 ratio. Well, I don't have moles. i got to get moles. Moles equals grams divided by molar mass. So I'm going to need the molar mass of CH4. 12 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 16. Um, 16 grams per mole. Look at that. I'm going back to my method. And then I would calculate the moles. And then I'd say it's a 1 to 2. Whoops. 1 to 2 mole to mole ratio. And then I'd use my molar mass of water, which is 18. And then I'd multiply these two here to get the grams. But here's the factor label method. Let's look. 15 grams of CH4 over 1, right? Times 1 mole of CH4 to is the same thing as 16 grams of CH4. All right, so this is an equality. And so now grams of CH4 cancels with grams of CH4. I now have moles of CH4. Now I'm going to compare the moles of CH4 to the moles of H2O, which I know from up here is it's a 1 mole to 2 mole ratio. So I want to get rid of moles of CH4, so I put moles of CH4 here. To get the moles of water, it's a 1 to 2 ratio, so moles of CH4 cancel with moles of CH4. Now I have moles of water. Okay. Now I want to get how many grams of water. So I want to I want to cancel moles of water. So I put moles of water here, and I want to get grams. Now what is the equality for water between grams and moles? Well, it's 18 grams per mole because 16 plus 1 plus 1 is 18. 18 grams per mole. So moles of water cancel with moles of water, and I'm left with grams of water, which is what the question said. So if you're a if you're a mathematically inclined person, you might love the factor label method. It's it's beautiful, isn't it? 15 divided by 1, hit enter, times 1, hit enter, divided by 16, hit enter, times 2, hit enter, divided by 1, hit enter, multiply times 18, hit enter, divide by 1, hit enter, and dunk. So you don't really need to multiply and divide by 1, so just go. You could also go 15 divided by 16, hit enter, times 2, hit enter, times 18, hit enter, done. The factor label method is beautiful, and it it's a little bit quicker than the visual method, but the visual method is, is lovely too. Iron reacts with steam to form hydrogen gas and iron 4 oxide. We balance it. It's a 3 to 4 to 1 to 4 multi -multi mole ratio. The question says, hey man, you got 10 grams of iron. 10 grams of iron. 10 grams. You calculate the grams of hydrogen. Where is that? That's here. How many grams of hydrogen do you need? Well, you, get gram, you go from grams to moles, and then moles to mole ratio, and then you calculate the grams. So grams of Fe, <clears throat> I want to get rid of grams of Fe and get to moles. Look at my periodic table, I think it says 56, 55.847, 56 grams per mole, 56 <clears throat> grams per mole. Now let's do our molar ratio. It's a 3 to 4 molar ratio. Let's see, so I want to get, this is moles of iron. So we have three moles of iron. I should have written Fe here, right? And that is to four moles, moles of H2. And then I want to get rid of moles of water, of H2, sorry, hydrogen gas. And I want to get grams in moles of hydrogen to grams of hydrogen is, um, it's H2, so it's one plus one is two, two grams per mole. There, just go ahead and calculate this and you're done. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at something called limiting reagents. Now remember, you can find this PowerPoint in Google Classroom. You can look up a bunch of videos. I gave some links here at the beginning of this. Oops. There are a couple links right here that you could use. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.